Hey everyone, thank you very much for clicking on to my YouTube channel. I am here today with Philip Weaver, who is the head of acting at East 15. He's an actor, he's the head of acting at East 15, and he's been a director in many countries across the world. The first question I'm going to ask you is, when it comes to auditions, do you have a do or don't list? Are there specific qualities you look out for? Yes, there are. Um... Let's start with the do's. Um, the do's, you know, do be prepared. You know, we never, we never quite know what um, you, you know you're going to bring, and we never really, you know, we haven't got a set plan. So if you can, if you're prepared on the day, the better prepared. And what by prepared, what I mean is, know your monologues inside out, and so you've read the play. You not only know the, um, the through line of the monologue, but you know the journey of the monologue within the play itself. So you know how it works within the whole play. It's really important um, because we at East 15 we, we spend a lot of time working on the monologues actually in the morning especially. Um, so please be prepared with the monologues. The other thing is um, do select monologues that you like. Mm. Don't think that, um, you don't look for something different just for the sake of it. Um, don't think that you're going to do something differently because actually we see a lot of monologues, we see a lot of people and it's rare, um, you know, we, we, we might see the same monologue four, five, six, seven times in one day. What you must do is do it Bring yourself to it. Don't, you know, so to move to the, do, the don'ts, don't try and impress us. Don't try and act it, if you like. Just learn it, tell us the story, and try and be as, 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 as honest as you can with that monologue. You know, not making it big, acted and theatrical. That's what we look for at East 15. We just want you to connect with that monologue. Um, you know, and it shouldn't be a finished piece. We're not looking for a finished piece. You know, we're open to being, you know, being surprised. Okay. And that's much better. You know, don't, don't try and impress us. So going off what you said about being surprised, when it comes to speeches, how do you feel about people doing speech by the opposite gender? I have no problem with that whatsoever. No, none whatsoever. We're currently working out with my third year, so at the moment we're doing professional development and we, we bring casting directors in and agents and they present monologues and two or three of them are doing um, gender swapped monologues. One, one from punk rock, Chadwick from punk rock is um, being done by a girl and uh, Lady Macbeth by a uh, bloke. So it works, it's, it, it, you know, if there's a connection and you're telling the story, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it would work with every single monologue, but um, most of the time, I, I think it works fine. Especially with Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of gender politics in all plays, but um, gender's gender. What are your thoughts on colourblind castings? Well, we, you know, there's no written policy. I think it would be wrong if there was, but um, uh, we certainly have no... Um, you know, we're colourblind with everything we do in terms of it makes no odds. We we tend to cast within the environment of East 15, particularly second year, well, first, second and third year plays, actually. Um, people, you know, students are cast for more, for, for a type in the third year, you know, we have to push the strengths in the third year. In the second year, it's about stretching individuals. In the first year, it's about introducing them to who they are themselves. But so, yeah, it's absolutely colourblind. Um, you know, individual students are cast um, for what they need, for what the learning outcomes are for that module. And if a particular student has an area that they really need to develop, then they'll be cast in a specific or particular role, irrespective of you know, background, um, culture, colour, it doesn't matter. How do you think Brexit would affect East 15? It's a very good question. Um, 
and at the moment I don't know we rule I think that um, as more information comes through from the Vice Chancellor, our Vice Chancellor at Essex University. Um, and also, I think, you know, over the ne this next year is going to be critical as well. We have a lot of international students here, um, probably more than any other drama school. Oh, really? Um, we have a, a three year full time undergraduate BA acting international course, uh, which is just in its fourth year and a two-year MFA international course. So it's just international students um, that make up those uh, courses. So, so we get students from all over the world. So not just Europe. Actually, we get a lot of North Americans as well, and South America, and, you know, Asia. So, you know, the European community students make up only a small portion of it of those numbers. So it will be interesting to see what changes, but I don't know. To completely change topics here, for recent graduates, what pieces of advice would you give to them? I think the best thing a young actor coming out of drama school can do is to watch the Brian Cranston video on YouTube where he says it, it, it's a wonderful little piece where he's caught on the hoof. I think he's going to an opening night, gala night of something, and somebody just chats to him. And he turns around and says, look, you know, I didn't do anything until I was about 38. And that's when I thought, oh, I don't care anymore. So he went along to an interview and got the lead role in Breaking Bad. Because and what he realised was, at that point, he had no control over whether he gets the job or not. But what he does have control over is how good he is when he's in that interview. And that's all an actor can do. They can do what they do really well in that interview, in an interview or audition, but they have no control over anything else. And you've got to accept that. That's really important because I think it's, it helps you. It's healthy. And the other thing, and this is what I tell all my graduating students. I, I often tell them a little story when I have to stand up in front of them all and it's the final day and they're graduating and all their caps and gowns and I tell them not to be little Christmas trees. And what I mean by that is that it's the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, I don't know if you know it, but it's the little fairy, the Christmas tree spends his life wanting to be a big Christmas tree. Before he knows it, he is cut down taken into a house and then thrown onto the scrap heap. So his life has been spent wishing he was something else. And that's my advice to young actors. Don't spend your time wanting to be or do something else apart from what you're doing. Because that's, you, you know, you, it, that will help in all the situations, in all the, the moments, the, the many disappointments that are ahead of young actors in particular. Um, and it helps that, um, you know, focus on the here and now, not something in the distance in the future. And whatever opportunity comes, then you embrace it, because that's what your life is at the moment. It's not something off in the future. It's here, it's now. And opportunities can't be missed. And many opportunities can be and are missed if you are not thinking about meetings with individuals down at the theatre or a play you've seen or whatever it is, you know, um, so don't be little Christmas trees. Now we're going to be what I call the lightning round. Right. So this is when you have to be like on top form. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to give you two options right. and you have to pick your favourite option okay. out of the two. Yep. Hamlet or Othello? Uh, Hamlet. Screen or stage? Stage. TV or film? Film. Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit? Lord of the Rings. The Young Vic or The Old Vic? Oh. God, Young Vic. Cat on a hot tin roof or shriek on a desire? Cat on a hot tin roof. Belgium or Slovakia? Oh, Slovakia. Sherlock Holmes or James Bond? <sighs> Sherlock Holmes. Julia Roberts or Meryl Streep? Julia Roberts. You've answered them all. Fantastic. Ah, okay. And Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, I like stories, the mystery, mm. you know, it unfolds, it doesn't just 
you know. I'm Judge Sherlock Holmes all the way, but most mm. of the time, I feel like James Bond, 007, especially England, people are like... It's fun, mm. you know, it's fun. I saw Kingsman the other evening for the mm. first time, and actually I found that very funny. It was really? very good, yeah. I haven't seen it. It's very funny, because it, it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Ah. A bit of a nod and a wink towards James Bond. It's, it's teasing them a bit. How long have you been teaching in, in the industry for, in general? Because uh, I tried to Google and find yeah. out, but I couldn't find it. Right, well, I graduated in 1988 mm -hmm. um, from the Royal Scots, which is now called the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. So I graduated, and I worked for about eight or ten years as an actor. And then I went back to into education to do a master's degree at Goldsmiths. And then I ended up I, doing an acting job. I was on tour of a play called The Son of Baghdad. And a friend of mine took ill and he was supposed to be directing a project at another drama school, <laughs> which will remain unnamed. Okay. Um, one of our, our competitors. Um, and he asked me if I could do it because I'd just finished that day. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And the rest is history. How long have you been at East 15 for? Well, um, I've been here um, for, uh, this is my eighth year. So you, you know what to do. Well, one hopes so. <laughs> I was in a different drama school for here as well, so, you know, and I was there for uh, nine years. Do you believe that there's a cut-off point, uh, time or age, every performer should re-evaluate their acting career? Yes. Um, not just acting career, but any career. I think it's healthy. I think reassessing, re-evaluating anything and everything that you do is just a healthy thing to do anyway. I mean, clearly, you know, kind of reading between those lines, I mean, maybe you're hinting at if you haven't had maybe the success that you wanted or thought that you were, would have, if, you, if you're not achieving um, or getting those jobs or even the interviews and the auditions, then, you know, surely, you know, any sound individual would at some point think, well, maybe I need to, you know, divert and look at other possibilities. We actually encourage our students to do that anyway. You know, it's part of what we teach at East 50. It's because gone are the days of leaving drama school, you go out and work as an actor. That doesn't happen anymore. It used to. But it doesn't happen anymore. And so diversifying, and we call it collaboration. You know, so our students learn how to collaborate, not only with actors, but other artists from other forms, fine artists, designers, writers, you know, and lots and lots of our students therefore make their own work when they leave. We, we sent 40 plays to Edinburgh this year. I was just about to say, I was at Edinburgh Fringe, yeah. and no joke, I was with somebody that was actually on your Acting Foundation course last year, right. and she literally said, East 15, East 15, East 15, East 15. Do you actually have like a connection with the Fringe? Do you... No, we just encourage, you know, young artists, once they graduate, or even when they're here actually, in second and third years, we encourage to go to Edinburgh and do something but uh, to make their own work, to create and generate their own work. And there are lots of successful companies out there at the moment that are doing very well. I mean, one's just going to the Soho down in town. Um, you know, the, because that, then one maybe doesn't need to reassess or reevaluate in five or six years because you're already doing it. You're doing, you know, what you set out to do, and that is, Make art, make to act, um, but as I say, you can't do it on your own. You and you certainly, you know, go on of those days where you wait by the telephone for your agent to call you. There are a, there's a small percentage of individuals that that happens for, but the other ninety eight percent, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. So. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Not diversify, but... Be flexible. Yeah, flexible and, you know, be open to whatever comes along and not just necessarily just the acting thing.
thing. Mm. That's just one small part of it, really. I mean, the training is a very, in one way, very traditional actor training, but we have modules as well, where we are, you know, professional development modules. It's all about co collaboration. And, yeah, keep repeating uh, myself. No, I know what you mean by being able to maybe not just always have the acting hat on, maybe have a writing hat or a director hat or being able to, Absolutely. to diversify. Yeah, and open to collaborating with others who maybe want to direct and write and do and creating and forming your own groups, your own companies, uh, doing things at a weekend or in the evenings. Oh, yeah, there's one thing we do here. We have a group uh, every Thursday last Thursday of every month. We call it Thursday Play Group. It's a bit of a pun. Because um, they usually end up in the bar afterwards. But it's for alumni. And every Thursday, a loads of alumni will get together. I just organise what the play is going to be. And we'll, we'll sit down and read a new play. Or a couple of new plays or something. And so, you know, we've got alumni going back 10, 15 years that come to the ones who recently graduated. So we try and encourage that as well. You know, we're very proud to be part of these 15. You know, because we're very proud of our roots, the Joan Littlewood Theatre Workshop, you know, which is all about play. It's all about improvisation. And it's all about creating um, outside and thinking outside the norm.